Now in this session we're going to talk about a uh, bitcoin script. What is bitcoin script? How does bitcoin script work? And I'm going to talk about a basic P2P KH transaction. A bitcoin script is a simple stack based programming language that enables processing of transactions on the bitcoin blockchain. So as you can see in the figure here, uh, there is a signature, there's a public key, there's an opcode and uh, it's just tries to verify a check signature. A Bitcoin script gives Bitcoin software instructions on how the coins in a UTXO can be spent. So the script was actually implemented by Satoshi Nakamoto in the release of Bitcoin Core version 0.1. Now I'm going to talk about what is Turing complete. Bitcoin script here is Turing incomplete, uh, whereas Ethereum, uh, the script is actually Turing complete. So when I say Turing complete, it refers to a machine that given enough time and memory, along with the necessary instructions can solve any computational problem, no matter how complex. The term is normally used to describe modern programming languages as most of them are Turing complete. So Bitcoin script is Turing incomplete. The incomplete actually means that Bitcoin script does not allow infinite loops. Uh, the reason is if there's a bad actor who writes a bad script, it can actually lock down the Bitcoin. That is the reason why Bitcoin limits the number of non-push operations that you can do per script. Now, if you look at the source code of Bitcoin, it says the maximum operations per script is limited to 201. So uh, they cannot be more than 201 non-push operations per script. So it has been deliberately intentionally designed to be Turing incomplete. Uh, in case of Ethereum, you have a gas concept and uh, if there is a bad actor writing a bad program, the, the, his gas actually would run out and the script would actually stop in case of uh, Ethereum. Now, there are the common opcodes for Bitcoin script. So opcodes are referred uh, using this OP underscore prefix, which are referred to as also referred to as opcodes. And the common opcodes are add, return, equal, check signature and check multisig. So how does Bitcoin script actually work? So there are two kinds of script in a Bitcoin transaction. One is the unlocking script, which is known as script sig. And there's a locking script known as script pub key. So Bitcoin script can be thought of a list of instructions recorded with each transaction that describes how the recipient of the funds can gain access to them. So there are two kinds of script, one is for unlocking and another is for locking. Now there are different types of Bitcoin transactions. Here is a list. We are going to take, uh, talk about P2P KH, what is pay to public key hash in this session. A basic P2P KH transaction looks like this. It has an unlocking script and a locking script. So initially the input is an unlocking script and the output has a locking script. So pay to public key hash transaction looks like this. It has a opt up and op hash 160 and the hash and the equal verify and the check signature. So we're going to talk about uh, P2P case transaction in detail. If you notice this uh, figure carefully on the left side, you have a transaction TX N minus one where the output has already been spent. And this transaction is confirmed on the network. So the input of a transaction comes from the output of a previous transaction. If the output, if the output is already spent. So here in this case, uh, the input has the unlocking script and the output has the locking script. So here in this, in the left side, if you see here, so this, uh, this transaction TXN minus one has the unlocking script for the previously spent transaction TXN minus two. And the output has the trans uh, UTXOs that were already spent by the input N. So on the on the right side, you see this, this transaction TXN, which is confirmed on the network, but the output is unspent. So it has the unlocking sp uh, script for the spent TXN minus one. And if this, this input contains the UTXOs that are not spent, there, there could be some UTXOs that are not spent from the previous transaction that is part of input. And the output actually specifies where the UTXOs must go. Who is the re receiver of the UTXOs? Building a P2P KS transaction. The first step is identify a previous transaction that contains UTXOs that you have control. Just some Bitcoin that you already own. Uh, which is what I was talking about in the uh, on the right side. Now build the input out points of the new transaction to identify the previous transactions UTXOs to spend. Build the outputs of the new transaction so the locking script will contain the conditions in which the newly created UTXOs can be spent and unlocked by the next transaction, which is what is shown in the right side of the diagram here. So every transaction has an input and an output. 
input has the unlocking script and the output has the locking script. So the last step would be create the unlocking script so that it meets the conditions set by the previous transactions output locking script. This contains the recipient signature and is created the, at the very last step, but is very much part of the input and is physically placed in the middle of the transaction. So to summarize again, uh, every transaction has an input and an output. The input comes from the previous uh, transactions output for the unspent uh, UTXOs and the output is actually the recipient's uh, signature that is used by the locking script. I hope you had uh, some understanding, basic understanding of the Bitcoin script. Uh, also check out my video of uh, UTXOs, uh, which will give you more insight on how the UTXOs are, how they work and what happens in a transaction. Thank you very much.